GTA Online's co-op sucks. Cash is king in Los Santos, and bringing friends should help you make more, right? Not really, other than heist, there's no great way to make money with your friends. I love heists, don't get me wrong, but outside of them, everyone's left for scraps, except, of course, the leader of said CEO or motorcycle club. Businesses were a fantastic addition introduced back in 2016 with the Finance and Felony update, which allowed players to now dabble in well-paying work outside of robbing banks, solo or with the crew. There are many businesses in the game to go over, so I won't, but just know this, anyone willing to help the leader with sourcing business supplies will be paid a bottom dollar minimum wage. GT Online used to be about working together to start and run a criminal empire together, but has since become a solo experience. I mostly play GTA Online solo now and have for some years, but I recently had a friend getting into the game. It's been really exciting for the both of us until he realized I've been doing nothing but wasting my time. I've been explaining how businesses work and the payouts. We fill up his small special crate warehouse and he gets a big payday of like a quarter of a million dollars or so. And I get him easily $24,000. Why is it you only get 10% for all the work we just put in? He asks me. I respond with, that's just how Mafia works. But in all seriousness, it's pretty messed up. I help him because I already have money and I want him to have access to fun things like cars or other businesses. But despite my good intentions and my goodness of heart, which is why you should like and subscribe, I get absolutely screwed. I understand that the leader has to invest in the business, so they should get the better cut. Yeah, I get that. But why is only 10% paid out for people putting in the same effort as the leader at the end of the day? I wish there were some sort of system in place to measure the time and or effort you put in to fairly pay you up, like up to maybe 50%, maybe? So should free non-business content also pay out fairly? The new clocking bell heist is a great example, released back in March of 2024, which is free to start for any player as it does not have a business tied to it, and it pays a fair $500,000 for about an hour of work. Nice, a free series of contact missions that end in a big payday for me and all my friends. Hell, that's even better than PAX Standard Heist. Um, no, go f*** yourself. The leader once again makes $500,000 as the other peasants only get $50,000. You and your friends put in the exact same effort and get paid 90% less money. Why? GTA Online has become a single player game with a silent protagonist and every once in a while your friends come along to do a heist or two with you, kind of like a DLC. Heists are a small percentage of GTA Online compared to the businesses. GTA Online's content mostly consists of these businesses, so why wouldn't they be more worth doing cooperatively? That I unfortunately cannot answer. Strangely enough though, Red Dead Online's business do pay out way more fairly. A full trader sale will earn the leader $625 for a distant delivery while the posse members get paid half. They get half of the cut. Yes, they can earn up to $300. And that's how it should work. The Moonshiner roll, also in Red Dead Online, will pay out 20% to posse members for helping with any sale, which I see fair because the Moonshiner roll is almost completely passive, so there isn't really too much effort going on there. The Bounty Hunter role, along with the Collector role, pay the exact same for everyone involved. If you and your friends went out collecting, they would be receiving the exact same pay because you would obviously be picking up the same collectibles as your friend. Bounty Hunting will pay out the same for everyone involved, even of course during Legendary Bounties. Red Dead Online unfortunately doesn't get any major updates anymore, but took some great steps in the right direction, whereas GTA Online has only gone backwards. The bail office business is probably the most similar to Red Dead Online's bounty hunting business, but in GTA, your friends don't get paid at all. And that is mostly the case for every business in this game, other than sale missions. GTA Online businesses should pay more fairly for everyone involved. Rockstar continues to divide us with these businesses and their crummy payouts to friends and other members. I would love to see a loyalty, crew, or even friend bonuses in place in order to receive bigger cuts. Actually, there's a game out there that has a decent system in place already, and I bet you couldn't guess it. Go ahead, go ahead, I'll give you a few moments to guess in the comments or quietly to yourself. I bet you won't get it though. In fact, I bet nobody will guess it. Alright. Are you ready? Arguably one of the worst AAA releases of all time, Fallout 76. 
has a loyalty system or a I think it's called a bondage thing kind of kinky but whatever that can give you and everyone involved a bonus of XP for example you can join any random group and start earning this loyalty bonus by filling up this little bar here in about five minutes or so of time this could be a great feature for GTA Online if your friends have spent let's say an hour in your circle serve they could get a permanent 10 to 20 percent boost to any of your business sales for the rest of time GTA Online is more beneficial and efficient to play solo most of the time and has become less and less an online game. The Career tab was added on June 13th, 2023, part of the San Andreas Mercenaries update. This Career tab was actually really great. It allowed new and veteran players to track their GTA Online career while earning bonuses like cars, money, RP, clothes, etc. I really like this new feature and everyone should, but once again there's a huge problem. It only really benefits solo players. Don't get me wrong though, most of these things can be done as a team and everyone would be rewarded, especially the contact missions. For example, Gerald's last play, everyone can earn these at the exact same time if you were playing with a 3-4 to four man crew, but where the career tab starts showing its flaws is of course under, once again, businesses. Earn $10 million from selling stolen vehicles. I've completed a pretty good chunk of that as you can see, but this $6 million chunk can be earned by nobody but me as the leader of the chop shop. Another really fun one I love just laughing at is the smuggler's run for the hangar business. Sell 1,000 crates of air freight cargo. So you're telling me, that if four players, four friends, wanted to do this, they would each have to go and sell 1,000 crates each of air freight cargo. It's not whether or not you're helping sell the cargo, it's your only your own sales of the air cargo. Another strange one, complete 15 acts as a leader. So if, once again, you were in a four-person friend group or crew, you would have to do 60 acts. 60 acts to have everyone in your friend group to have earned this challenge. <laughs> Overall, I really like the career tab and its rewards, but at the end of the day, the more and more new features added to GT Online has done nothing but separate friends and discourages players into playing with groups. It's less of an issue now because everyone has money. But once GTA 6 comes along and nobody has any money, who the hell are you going to choose to be the leader of your crew? Genuinely, like, are you going to play Russian roulette or flip a coin? And even then, like, three out of four of the guys are going to be completely screwed while only one person makes all the money. Reddit Online has already fixed this problem, and it's actually better than you think. It should become a feature in GTA Online. I mentioned the trader business before, the business that gives posse members a 50% cut of all sale missions. This business also has a great feature that I don't think is acknowledged enough and could easily work for GT Online as well. For those of you who haven't played Red Dead Online, let me give you the basic rundown. It's essentially a hunting business where you can take your hunted animal skins or carcasses and turn them into animal materials to, of course, earn you money. What's especially great about this business is anyone in the posse can hunt animals and turn them into supplies. I could join a random posse in a public session, kill a deer, and turn it into the leader's trading business without a sourcing mission needing to be started from the leader of the posse at all. That would be truly amazing in GTA Online. Imagine four players all participating in the bail office bounty hunting businesses and all getting their own bounty targets simultaneously, or four players simultaneously getting crates for you in your special cargo warehouse, all while everyone gets paid the same amount or a 50% or more of the total take. Regardless, Circle Serve members need to be paid a fair wage, along with Motorcycle Club members, of course. We all play GT Online with our friends for two reasons, to have more fun and with a similar goal in mind to make more money. It should be easier to do with friends, not harder. I would also like to propose a brand new business to GT Online called Crew Businesses. A business that everyone could participate in without the leader's approval or need of starting missions. I think one owner could invite up to three other players to be co-owners and they could all run the business together. A dealership would be the perfect place to start, anyone could go and steal or repo cars and allow them to be sold at the dealership, all while everyone gets their fair share of wage. 
I have many good ideas for this concept of the dealership crew business idea that I want to make a separate video on it. So let me know if you guys would like to see it. At the end of the day, if you like helping your friends make more money for their business, then by all means, do it to your heart's content. I just hate the idea that if everyone in GT Online got reset back to level one right now with everything we have available, it would be easier to make money solo than actually getting help from your friends for the most part. Or if GTA 6 came out with only businesses available at launch and no heists, we'd once again just be dividing ourselves in order to make money at the start of the game. It is truly stupid that Rockstar has put better systems in place for Red Dead Online and just didn't even think to do it for GTA Online. I think the only answer is shark card sales, which is disappointing, but I just hope GT Online eventually goes back to being an online game that should be easier and more fun to experience with your friends. Unfortunately, it only looks like it's going backwards, but I guess time will tell. I'm still very excited for GTA 6 2 and how businesses could possibly work, whether or not they're going to go the Red Dead Online roll route, or if they're going to continue doing the GT Online-esque businesses, or a good mix of both. I'd love to see a good mix of both, personally. I want to continue making fun concept idea videos, like the dealership crew business idea I mentioned a second ago, to cope with my excitement. With all that being said though, hope you guys enjoyed, and please do leave me your thoughts down below in the comment section whether or not it's been harder or easier to play with friends as GT Online has gone on. Thanks again guys for watching, if you are new consider subscribing, and in the meantime check out these videos right here, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!